Uh, the geometry, the structure of nature, is designed on the basis of what is called fractal geometry. And fractal geometry is unique geometry, not the one we learn in school. The geometry we did learn in school, called Euclidean geometry, you can't model nature with it. it does, all those triangles, cones, cubes, and spheres are not what nature really looks like. But in, when we were five years old, in kindergarten, we made a tree. We made a Euclidean tree. We had like a, a cylinder for the trunk and a ball for the top. But obviously that's not nature-like. That geometry is not the nature geometry. We now recognize this new geometry that really came into our world in 1983 with the work of Benoit Mendelbrot from IBM called fractal geometry and it's a different version of geometry and it's very exciting but here's the fundamental key characteristic of this geometry built into the nature of the mathematics is a reality that images of the structure repeat themselves in a very self-similar fashion at any level of the organization that you're talking about so if you want to talk about cells or people or civilizations they're all built on the same geometry but the key word for most people to understand is that this geometry links an ancient mystical understanding. Uh, there was a phrase that uh, people are familiar with, as above, so below. Well, in this new geometry, that becomes mathematical and scientific as a reality. Every atom is a mini black hole, that it has infinite density, that it has infinite potential, that everything has singularity at its center. Um, the vacuum energy, the structure of the vacuum itself uh, interlinked or entangles all protons, the, the proton being the nuclei of an atom, the, that all the nuclei of atoms are entangled because of the structure of the vacuum, that the structure, that, that the vacuum is not a passive vacuum but an active vacuum that has a role to play in the creation of the, our, our material world but as well is the structure that connects all things. So actually this is a mathematical rendering of the concept everything is one so that it actually is uh, mathematically proven. That's why I can study the nature of a cell and understand the nature of a human because a human is a fractal image of a cell. We were made out of cells, we're just a, a large version of a cell. And so that a human body turns out not to be a one thing as we see it in the mirror, but when we really understand if you could see it with microscopic eyes so you could see what it looked like, you recognize that a human body is a community of upwards to 50 trillion cells. Every cell is essentially a miniature human because virtually every cell has every function that I have in my body, it's already present. As a matter of fact, any function that I do with my body is only because a cell can do that function because I'm made out of cells. Well, I think that um, the world of physics and the world in general is transforming and that there's an opening that's occurring and certainly in physics, um, you know, there's a level of arrogance that's slowly uh, fading away, you know, not so long ago when I started in uh, bringing my work to the physics community some 15 to 20 years ago, the tendency was to think we've got the universe pretty well all figured and all we need is a few little things to work out and then we've ha we have it. And so there was a lot of, um, you know, arrogance in the way, you know, physicists were interacting with new ideas and so on. And so it was extremely difficult to be heard. But uh, since then, a lot of failures in our theories have come forward. A lot of experiments in the laboratory and, you know, data from cosmological instruments and so on have shown us that there's anomalies that we cannot explain with the standard model and all sorts of things are coming up. And so, uh, you know, a certain level of failure of string theory and so on. And I think that uh, it's, uh, it's changed the world of physics. The same responses of cells to their world are exactly uh, the same kind of behavioral responses that we have in our own world, in the world the way we live. So that it becomes understandable. This, this is why, for example, why we work on cells in biology. Because if we get an understanding of the nature of the cells, we can apply that information directly to the nature of human biology so that we extend this work. So in looking at nature as fractal and recognizing that the cell is the fundamental unit of the human body, 
that the human body is actually built in the image of that cell. Then we start to recognize, look, inside of you right now are 50 trillion citizens. Their, each cell is its own sentient being. When I was culturing these cells, I'd take them out of a person's body, put them in a culture dish, they have their own life. They didn't need us. It helps to get uh, other physicists to look at it, to get some uh, credibility in the physics I'm writing, and to make people aware that we are not living in a finite world, that you know, the atomic structure itself has this infinite potential within it that, you know, when people are talking philosophically or spiritually about their infinite nature and all this stuff, it doesn't have to be outside the physical world, that the actual physical world is what they're talking about, that, you know, philosophy and spirituality are not divorced from the atomic structure, that the atomic structure is actually a manifestation of uh, this dynamic of creation that, you know, we might call uh, consciousness or spirituality and so on.